everyone. I'm just clearing this space right now. How are you doing? It's the last day of April and we've got so much ahead of us in May. So I wanted to do a May update for everyone and also do a star seed reading. So if you think you're a star seed or you're just interested to see what it's about, then um, stick around for that. Most of you probably already know if you're a star seed or not. So I'm Sammy, by the way. Please like and subscribe. May is going to be jam packed with so much fun. And starting on the 3rd, that's when we're going to get into that Sun Square Saturn energy, which can be heavy and feel depressing. So if challenges come up or bad news comes out um, or things come up in your life that are kind of weighing you down, it's important not to get stuck in that energy, which is really hard to say, like don't get stuck in the energy because I mean it's a tough energy to work through. So the most important thing is to keep your eye on the prize, focus on your goal, and Think about little details, little things you can do every day to make yourself feel better as we move through that energy. So Monday's going to be tough, um, and I don't want you to anticipate the toughness, but if something arises, then, you know, handle it, deal with it. I've got some binaural beats on in the background, and so it sounds like crickets right now. Hey Google, play another song. Okay, nice. So, Monday, the Sun square Saturn with Uranus conjunct with the Sun. So I talked about that a little bit in the last video as well. So that's going to be on the 3rd. And then there's a meteor shower happening on the 4th and 5th. Um, an another big day is the full moon, which is actually a total eclipse, which we haven't had a total lunar eclipse since January of 2019. And so that's going to be a full moon in Sagittarius. By then we'll be in Gemini. So the moon will be in Sagittarius. And that's going to be super powerful. Star seeds are being activated hugely the month of May. So that's why I wanted to focus on star seeds today. I've been feeling more connected to my cosmic family. Um, a way that you can do this, you can use lapis lazuli. It's blue and it has these specks of like gold and white. Can you see this? See? I don't know if you can see it. Anyway, that helps. Um, Tektite helps. Amethyst always helps with any kind of divine connection that you're wanting to strengthen. Um, black tourmaline is good for protection. But the lapis lazuli is very good for cosmic connections. Talking to your star family, uh, your soul family, whatever you want to call it. I've been feeling really drawn lately to Andromeda, which is where I'm from, and or at least spent many lifetimes. And uh, so if you're a star seed, you probably already know or have a, have a clue to where you're from, or uh, feel drawn to certain galaxies or certain um, places in the universe. So we really want to focus on that this month and integrate I know we're going through integration right now, and that looks different for everyone. So, if you feel that you, you're integrating right now where you're having to slow down, um, that's going to be happening all month. So, the key to this month is going to be taking it very easy on yourself, especially on Monday when the sun squares Saturn. It's going to be tough. And you don't want to be super hypercritical or upset with yourself that you didn't get something done or whatever. We really want to focus on the super big picture right now. 
not the 3D, not the material, not the bills and all that. Uh, not definitely not the outside world and the media. Okay, so no news, no media. Keep away from anything negative. Toxic people. You want to be in your highest vibration the whole month of May so that you receive all the upgrades that we're getting. Today, the Schumann, you can tell we're getting a ton of light, cosmic light coming in. Um, this is 5D cosmic light coming in to help prepare us. And the thing about astrology, and this is what interests me about this factor, is that the dark, it's like astrology just is, right? It just is. And it happens to play into world events. But also, you can plan around those astrological events and make things happen for yourself in the same way that the dark or the light can use these astrological events as well. So they're going to happen regardless, but how you deal with it and how you deal with the incoming energies, that's what's going to create uh, exactly what happens for you. For instance, I'm assuming the dark is going to use this tough energy on Monday to really just slam down the hammer on people. <laughs> come out, the media would come out with some crazy story, something super depressing, something that makes you feel powerless or, or that the world is going down the tubes. And so really just stay away from the media. Focus more on your internal being who you're becoming, what your life path is, what your purpose is, and what that looks like. So in order to keep the highest vibration, you can play wonderful binaural beats. YouTube has tons of channels where you can get uh, 432 megahertz, 528 megahertz, 999, 1 million megahertz, and they all do different things. You can look into that more but it's very calming, it sets the energy and the vibration in your home. Just keep that on in the background or in your car when you're going somewhere, uh, especially when you have to be around other people. And uh, you can't really control the deflection of their energy, but you can control how you feel and whether you absorb it or not, right? So we want to deflect that uh, negative energy. So keep positive music on. The tones are really good because they don't influence, you know, positively or negatively, really. It just is. So that helps you kind of find your own neutral place. And then your thoughts really come in too, right? So we got to think super positively all month long. Eating really good food, really high uh, vibration, dense nutrient foods mainly fruits and vegetables if you can. Great month to detox. Great month to start a new diet. It's a great month for um, any kind of cleanse or water fast. We really want to have our bodies the, the ultimate vessel this month to integrate what we've gotten so far since April. Uh, there have been a lot of changes since April. Uh, 11th or 12th or so since the new moon and we've been getting tons of light energy the Schumann has been up and down up and down every few days we've gotten several solar flares and uh, CMEs that were earth facing okay look at all of this as light coming on the planet okay and this is meant to help us but in the process it shakes things up not to mention Pluto, not to mention the Scorpio full moon, which really shattered a lot of things for us emotionally. Now it's like integrating all of that in preparation for the stuff that's coming in towards the end of May. And that's really going to boost star seeds. It's really going to awaken a whole lot of people. And I feel that that's why the dark has been pushing a lot of things on us physically. Uh, to kind of control or prohibit us from growing and absorbing these changes. Uh, so stay open-minded, stay by like-minded people who are open and encouraging and fun. You want to have a creative space in your home, do things you're passionate about, 
and rest, really a lot of rest. So being gentle with yourself, staying in the high vibration, tons of water, any kind of cleanse or detox would be great. Exercise is really good if you have the energy to do that. A lot of us will be pretty tired this month, I'm getting. But um, it's just from the integrating. But that does come with a little bit of excitement. And so keep in mind, all of these things are just for, for being prepared. We're being prepared for the energy that's going to come in with this total lunar eclipse with the full moon on May 26th. And it will be visible mostly for people on the West Coast, but I think on the East Coast in North America we'll be able to see at least a partial or half of that process. Okay, anyway, so I'm trying to think what I'm forgetting before I get into the star seed reading. Uh, if you're not familiar with the term star seed or you don't know what I'm talking about right now, that's fine. Um, you could ask any kind of questions to me through email, that's in the description box, or you can comment below and we can get a conversation going. But a star seed is basically uh, people who go through in their life these feelings of they uh, hate being here, they feel like they don't belong here, they are connected to higher beings and sources that have always had a good intuition or um, have this kind of spiritual connection even if let's say they're atheists you know it doesn't matter it's like there's just always this magical spiritual thing about them or this higher knowledge or this higher wisdom that they hold and the more they tap into that the more that they connect to that they will find that they have the ability to channel they are psychic they um channel higher beings or ET beings or they have dreams where they feel connected to certain ET beings and so that would be their uh, soul family or their ET family, their starseed family and the more you dig into that feeling um, you get those synchronicities, there's all kind of symbolism and things fall into your lap like you know YouTube videos about a certain ET race or you watch a documentary about it and something really sparks your interest that's the stuff you want to follow okay if you think you're a starseed many of you probably already know that you you are okay we all are in a sense okay some of us are more like earth angels but many of us our star seed. So we come from a different world, a different planet, and like I've been saying, Earth is a place to be right now. Earth is changing drastically, and Gaia herself is moving and changing into a higher dimension, and it's time for humanity to do that as well. So the Earth is splitting. If you don't know, um, you need to look into Dolores Cannon. She is amazing, was amazing, and her work is out there everywhere. So she's got tons of books. I think her daughter continues her work today. And um, she basically did past life regression through hypnosis on thousands of people and they were all saying the same thing. So she has all this data that she's collected and all these books that she's written about this information that's come through these people from hypnosis. Anyways, look into it. It's really cool. So what so many beings have said and what really resonates with me and what I've heard from my own guides and tons of other people on the planet who channel the earth is splitting in the sense that on a quantum level in a higher dimensional level we're moving through a place also in the galaxy or in the universe where it's time for her to move up she's tired of being in the 3D and many of us don't want to be here. Many of us actually came on the planet to raise the vibration in order to move higher so that the humans who have been stuck and trapped in a negative cycle for a very long time have the chance now to ascend. That's the term ascension. That's where that comes from. And move higher into 4D and eventually 5D and then wherever else your soul desires. But for right now, Earth is like the project. The whole universe is watching. Probably the whole millions of multiverses or well, however many is out there. Billions and trillions of planets. 
everyone knows that this is happening and they're watching, okay? We're getting a soft disclosure, right? Like right around this time. And uh, if you know or if you're familiar with the UFO community, there's been tons of stuff coming out for years and years and years. And they're just very slowly now starting to give it to us, the government that is. So, we know something big is happening, okay? They could use it to their advantage, but we're not going to allow that to happen. That You know, just be aware of that false narrative that could come out in regards to ET um, being negative or, you know, starting a war or whatever they're trying to say. So, if you are a star seed, you already know this. Tap into your soul family. We know that we're protected. We know that we're here for a reason. We know that we're at war. It's a spiritual war. It's a physical war. Um, as far as it being real, tangible is what I mean. Uh, and we're seeing that play out, you know, in the collective. So, let's get into it. I'm going to read a few of these star seed cards, probably Spirit Animal Oracle. In the light worker deck, so spirit. I would like to invite all archangels who would like to be a part of this message. Michael, thank you. Razio. Lady Faith is here too, and she's connected to the planet, so that's important. Thank you. Source energy. Ancestors. Guides and guardians, please be present and protect us at this time. Give me clear communication and interpretation. Can we please have a message for the star seeds for the month of May? What can we expect? And um, how should we deal with this energy? Thank you. So, for the star seeds or for the newly awakened, which there will be many of, newly awakened. Um, they just can't stop it, you know, and they try really hard, and <laughs> they really try hard from every single possible angle, but they just can't stop it, and, and that's why you see the desperation. You know, things aren't making sense, and it's just not logical, so as we come to this uh, place of higher higher perspective, it's important to realize that through their desperation, I mean, that is kind of scary, you know, and they're, they don't really know what to do either, but they're just fighting, so regardless, we're going to have to fight, I don't see them giving up, I mean spiritually, but, um, We just need to be compassionate towards them as well, the dark, okay, because they're struggling and a lot of them have lost their meaning, their souls, or their path, and they lost their connection to source, so we just really need to stay compassionate and focus on the planet and humanity, but also just have that in the background, you know, there's just the awareness that it's kind of sad. Okay, Spirit, what do you have for the star seeds for the month of May? What do we need to know? Star seed message. Okay, the golden children, inner child, tenderness, innocence, and rare gifts. And we have jump in, Andromedan energy. Woo woo, that's my fan. Adventure, say yes to change. Okay, so of course we're going to have huge transformations that come with this new light energy that's going to be coming onto the planet in May. Okay, the golden children, inner child, I really like this energy. It's like getting down to the basics again, having that, that sense like a child. The innocence, just the awareness and, and the um, curiosity and open to adventure and open to newness. 
and just willing to take in this new energy and allow it to raise you higher. It's really going to push us forward in our ascension process. And so with that is going to come a lot of change. Those of us who are moving higher are going to be feeling more and more into the fourth dimension. You may be seeing more of the veil slip away. Or you would be seeing other beings, seeing higher dimensional beings or lower dimensional beings. Um, but just the supernatural becoming more natural. You know, getting used to the phenomenon that's around us all the time that we really just can't see. And just being open to it. And fearless about it. And excited about it. Because we've been there before. I mean, we lowered our vibration to come on the planet. So now we're just going to do it going back the other way, higher, with the planet. As a team. Teamwork. Tenderness. Being gentle. Not just with yourself, but with others. You're like, really? This, this is difficult, what we're going through. And we signed up for it, and it's awesome, and it's exciting. But we just really have to take care of ourselves. Uh, in our bodies, you know, be gentle, don't push yourself, and acknowledge your gifts, your rare gifts, and a lot of children, this message, the golden children, um, have been coming on the planet, and more and more are coming on the planet now, so these are a lot more also of the younger children, but this is just a good energy to be in. So this year, a lot of star seeds will be coming on the planet, and um, they have been waiting for a higher vibration to be able to enter. So many women were dealing with infertility, many women were dealing with miscarriage, and I feel that the problem wasn't necessarily the vessel. Um, or the situation, but more so the energy on the planet wasn't ripe, you know, and so many billions of us are here and many people are trying to, people, many souls are trying to come and enter now just to be a part of this experience. This only happens, you know, over so many tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of years. So, um, and even I think I don't, I'm not sure if it's happened before where we've progressed with the planet uh, in our bodies, you know, and all together as a collective. So, we want to focus on our gifts. Uh, these children will be coming in, more children, children will be coming in, especially when Jupiter comes in. That's another reason why May is going to be awesome. Jupiter comes in on the 13th to Pisces. So, expansion of spiritual things. Check your your house for where um, Pisces would be in your zodiac wheel. Um, you can do that by finding your birth chart online. So, you want to find Pisces in your chart, the house of Pisces, and what's there. Which house is it? How will you be affected by Jupiter? So, Jupiter brings blessings, um, expansion, and he's like, he's like daddy, you know? <laughs> so, he wants to bring good things. Doesn't mean it's going to be great for everyone. Um, other things can happen with Jupiter. Sometimes overindulgence is possible, depending on the house that, that it's in. Um, some people can gain weight when Jupiter transits into a new sign. Especially like Pisces that likes to escape, so we have to be careful with overdoing it, um, drinking, that sort of thing. And with this kind of depressive energy here, right before, on the 3rd, we're going to have enough time to come out of it before Jupiter comes. But I'm just thinking, don't if you're depressed you know, and weighed down, you would be more likely to the escapism. Uh, anyways, don't do that. Okay? So we're running away from toxicity, we don't want to be in the escapist energy, we really want to focus on our higher selves in this moment here, staying in the moment really just blasts you off as far as ascension goes. Uh, so that's really important. 
staying in the moment. As you do that more and more, you're so much more aware of your thoughts, what you say to people, your surroundings, the energy that you feel at every moment. And um, it just takes practice. And um, it's like more of a realization in every moment. And that really, I mean, it helps you connect. It helps you hear more from your guides. And it's just a really good thing. So we have a lot of work to do in May. And it is preparing us for a bigger change, a, a more a more strongly felt Yes, honey. Hmm? I go ahead. I'm not making video. I am making video. You know I No, I am. Shh. Go ahead. I'm making video. Well, your computer's not on. Yeah, I'm not making it on the computer. I'm making it on the camera. Okay. But how long are there Shh. buttons in your No! <laughs> okay, so we want to jump in now. And draw it in energy. This is just being unafraid. And just really getting excited about it. There's a ton of adventure that lies on the other side and at the end of May where we can really experience so much more of our star family and really get more connected to source and our ancestry as far as cosmic ancestry and learning more about ourselves and our job and what we're really good at on a soul level. Like what? what's your niche? Why are you here? Some of us are just here just to be, just to hold the light and um, just to have a presence and even that presence alone affects others you know and that raises humanity's vibration but also some of us have really important things that we need to do certain missions that we're on many of us will have many missions you know you don't just have one thing to do and that goes along with everything else you have to deal with in the real world Shh. but say yes to change okay Spirit is saying, say yes to change. And let's read it just in case. And um, our world is changing. Like drastically. We can see that happening, but uh, a lot of us feel out of control about it. And I'm just here to tell you, you're in control of your own world, your own life. So what are we going to do with this energy? We're going to take it on like a boss, like we've always done, and get excited about it. Okay, I'm going to read this now, The Golden Children. Inner child, tenderness, innocence, rare gifts. Golden children, children of the sun, are highly advanced, extremely intelligent souls who are incarnating increasingly on planet Earth. They have little or no personal karma and possess incredible gifts and intuitive abilities. So that's why they had to wait to come. Because karma is just being demolished right now. Their hands are being dealt. Everybody, not the children's. So they don't want to enter and start collecting karma because they have none, right? So they're coming in now as karma is being depleted and everyone's um, starting a new cycle. Then they can enter without causing more karma for themselves. Yes, golden children are born with a very clear mission. Many remember it from a young age and begin answering and sharing it in early life. Due to their unique intelligence, they may find themselves easily bored at school, right? So these are not problem children. And many of us have these kids. Most have never incarnated on earth before. And so if they're not supported in the right ways, they struggle with physical life here. They're often referred to as the new humans. If you pull this card, it may be a sign that you're being called to mother, father, or nurture a child. You may be called to tend to your own inner child, a creative idea or project, or a new beginning. Yes. To treat yourself or the new beginning with sweet, tender love, right? So being easy on ourselves 
enjoying the process as we move higher in our ascension and being open and that that has like that sense of tenderness and I really feel like saying this isn't really a time to be focused on others or relationships but more so uh, cultivating your own relationship with yourself your soul your higher self really making sure that you're healing doing all the shadow work getting all that stuff out of the way Oh, everything we've been dealing with like we really have to make sure that we're doing the work because as we move into this phase now it's gonna be tougher on ourselves if we have all that work still to do okay um, and you know as we deal through this and we move higher in our ascension process more and more comes up as we deal with the illusions and the matrix and all that stuff we have more to uncover and we think we're done with it and then another piece of it will come back up. It's like more healing, more work to do. So I'm not saying you should be completely done and healed by now. That's not really a thing. But if you know there's something you've been avoiding, now would be the time as we prepare for this energy to come in to really work through anything that we can. And a lot of us, let me just say, are being forced to do that. So you know, in your life, in your world, uh, if things have come to a stop, or with this full moon we had in Scorpio, where you were like, nothing felt right, nothing felt connected, or you felt a lot of uh, upset, past emotion, any kind of sadness or trauma, anything that was coming up was letting you know, like, hey, psst, psst. <laughs> Like Dan Cook, right? Psst, hey, you're gonna deal with this. You're gonna do it now. You don't have a choice. So, <laughs> so many of us are going through this, uh, especially like in relationships. It's like, hey, maybe you should just do your own thing. Okay, I'm gonna focus on me. And maybe that came up out of nowhere, like this Scorpio moon, right? So many shocking surprises and things came up in relationships and friendships and uh, career situations. Like, this isn't working. And you know it's not working. And it hasn't been working for a really long time. So now, we're going to force it to end. You don't have a choice. And you're going to deal with all of this shit now. So do it. You know? I mean, that's just what I've been noticing around me. Okay. To treat yourself or the new beginning with sweet, tender love, to nurture and nourish it, to give it every chance to grow and reach adulthood, to encourage it, to water it, to see the world through the innocence of a child, to see yourself and all others as innocent children. Yeah. Like even though our focus isn't necessarily on others, it's really important that we stay in a compassionate place towards others. Um, so that we can't let the outside world to get us upset. We don't allow people in our personal space with toxic energy getting us upset. Just very neutral. Just like super calm and chill and just like, okay. Just let it roll off your back. Because we're in preparation now. Preparation mode. Okay? Hashtag preparation mode. To remember that deep down everyone is trying their best. And if they're treated with a tender heart, they'll not harden as they journey through this great adventure called life. The Star Seed Soul Inquiry is How can you treat yourself? or others more tenderly. So we have to be super gentle, like I've been saying, with ourselves and others. But I don't feel like it's like catering to others or not wanting to step on anyone's toes or avoiding confrontation. It's more so just like an understanding of like being at peace with others, even if you disagree, no matter what comes up, it's just more like a, okay, like I see you. 
and I have compassion and love for you no matter what because you're here and I'm here and I'm you and you're me and we're all source and we're in this together and despite our social conditioning and our you know all of the things that we've been uh, exposed to in our childhood pre predisposition and all the genetic and all the cosmic and all the ways that we're affected we need to get down to that deeper level, right? The soul level of acknowledging another person. Like the book said, seeing everyone as an innocent child. I think the world would be a much better place if we treated each other like we were children. Not like I'm a kid and you're a kid and, and kids are sometimes mean to each other. I mean like I'm an adult and you're a child and I'm going to treat you like I would and explain things to you and be softer and gentler with you as I would with a child. And then if everyone treated me like that, I would feel nice too, right? Okay, next card, jump in. Andromeda and energy, adventure, say yes to change. Andromeda is a spiral galaxy, the closest galaxy to the Milky Way, yes it is. It's believed that Andromedan star seeds are a group of beings who love their freedom. Mm-hmm. Very adaptable. They have a strong willingness and ability to change and go with the flow, to find calm in the chaos, to swim with the tides. This card is here to encourage you to do the same. Absolutely, a million percent, we have to go with the flow. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what to expect coming into May, but I'm on that ship. That ship's coming in, I'm on it. And I'm going with it. I'm out with the tide. I'm doing it. Because it's way better than what's happening here. <laughs> and it's only going to boost our ascension, and it's only going to further raise humanity's vibration. And I really feel like it's going to get the ball rolling. You know, and we will see more outrage from the, from the negative or, or the dark. And I think that just, I mean, it just backs it up for you, right? It just lets you know, like, we're really a part of this. And it's something we all have to come to terms with. Like, this is really happening. It is like a movie. It's like the coolest sci-fi movie, and you're the star. Anyways. Perhaps you have a significant goal or opportunity ahead of you. If so, you're being guided to jump in. Don't wait for permission. Don't stall until you feel ready. Take a deep breath, a good old run up, and jump right on in. Life bends for the courageous, and courageous is what you're being called to be. You're ready to face the right direction no, just kidding. You're already facing the right direction. The only thing left to do is leap. You'll figure out the details as soon as you go along. What? Why can't I read? <laughs> You're already facing the right direction. The only thing left to do is leap. You'll figure out the details as you go along. Things may not always be smooth sailing. Life on Earth rarely is. However, it's the rougher seas that teach us how to sail with glory, and once you know that, you can navigate any sea, ocean, or storm. The Andromedans want you to fall in love with surfing the waves of life, to seek more adventures, to embrace your own adaptability, and find a way to be the calm in the chaos. You didn't come to Earth to be passive. I gotta read that again. You didn't come to Earth to be passive. You came to earth to truly live. Now take a good run up and leap. Starseed Soul Inquiry. How can you be more adventurous? How are you being called to jump right on in and leap? Ooh, that's exciting! Excuse me. So as we prepare for great change, let's ask Spirit the best animal spirit you could be. I'm not ready. What is the best animal spirit that star seeds can embody in the month of May? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Porcupine. There's three. Let's read them. Porcupine, 
time for beginner mind, right? What did we just hear about the golden child and uh, not being afraid for a new beginning, and taking a leap of faith and going with the flow. Time for beginner mind. Time to think about, um, this is like the energy of the fool card. It's like, come what may, this is the energy I've been talking about in the last few readings. It's like, I'm up for adventure, I'm surrendering to the universe, I'm surrendering, surrendering to my higher self and my highest soul monad uh, group and I'm just ready to do whatever source is doing through me and uh, creating the new world. So it's like I'm ready for adventure, I'm fearless, super courageous right now. Because why? Because you didn't come to earth to be passive. We have to stand up, seriously, and make the changes. And Spirit is going to guide us through this and show us the way to do it um, positively, peacefully, gracefully, compassionately. But that doesn't mean you can't be fierce as a lion, right? Courageous as a lion. So that is exciting. Or courageous as a porcupine. <laughs> I don't know, but he is so cute. He's got these feathers hanging down and these cool uh, colors in his hair. Anyways, vulture spirit, nothing is wasted, right? So that means dealing with what we have in front of us, not taking anything for granted. Everything is a cause for growth. It's a cause for expansion nurturing, healing, helping others. So we don't want to waste this energy. We don't, definitely don't want to waste this time and this space that we're being given to prepare for what is coming. So we have to be in the highest vibration possible. I cannot say that enough. Eating right. The less meat, the better. Uh, no alcohol. No uh, any other kind of substance abuse. Water. Tons of water. It's a crap ton of water. Take gold supplements. Take uh, fermented skate fish oil supplements. Apple cider vinegar. Lemon water. Herbal teas. Really, uh, any kind of detox or cleanse. It's a great time for that. Fasting. I cannot say enough what fasting has done for me spiritually and what it continues to do. Anytime I need clarity, anytime I need to prepare, anytime I need to feel connected. Fasting is amazing. It works within like a day or two. And uh, I don't know, I'm so at peace and I have clarity and I know exactly what it is I'm meant to be doing. So fasting is a really good way to prepare your mind and increase your connection, but also prepare your body. Okay, because when you're eating, your body can't focus on healing itself. It can't focus on um, building up your immune system and those walls and those boundaries for things that we don't want to get in. So the less food, the better. Uh, and when you are eating really nutrient dense foods, increase your vegetable and fruit intake. Like if that's all you want to eat, I'm down with it. Okay. Uh, wild rice or brown rice is good too. Anyways, I'm not a doctor. Okay. Just saying that. But, uh, I do know nutrition for ascension, okay? Okay, uh, lizard spirit. Dream the world into being. Dreaming the world into being. So visualization is so important and we have to remember that we're constantly adding to the collective consciousness, constantly. Every thought, every action is going up like, a, like the cloud, right? But it's all the collective consciousness. So everything we're adding, are we really adding? Are we really doing something to, to make our future more beneficial for our children and our children's children and the future of humanity? Are we entering good, positive, compassionate things into the collective consciousness? So as we visualize for the future, we're dropping those little seeds in the collective. And the more of us that do this, I mean, they're not stopping it, period. 
But it really becomes so powerful when we all do this, when we all visualize a better world. Uh, and you can really get down to detail with this. And the more detail, the better, actually, because it makes it more concrete for you, more real. And then the subconscious is really good at showing us, because we're creators, how it looks in the physical and making that happen for us in the physical. So, not taking this time for granted, not taking the people around us for granted, staying compassionate, staying in a childlike energy of, of innocence and wonder and uh, in this creative energy, really taking care of yourself this month. Do not push it. Do not, listen to me, do not tell people yes when you want to say no. Don't sign yourself up for a bunch of stuff that you don't have the energy to do. If you need to stay at home in bed, do that. Because we're uh, getting ready to take a big leap this month coming. And it starts tomorrow. So, I'm so excited. Um, I really feel like we're making a lot of progress now as a collective. And if you don't think so, I would invite you to tap in and ask your guides and ask your higher self what you need to be doing because when you're connected and in a higher perspective, we're doing so much work. And we really just need to help overcome the fear that has been um, projected and entered into the collective consciousness from others who are not yet awake. And remember, as they awaken, they're going to need you to be that calm in the storm, to be the one that they can come to. You know, at first we all seemed pretty crazy. And as we continue to move forward, we're going to look less and less crazy, and we're going to look more and more like, oh, Maybe they're pretty knowledgeable. Maybe they know something we don't. And they seem pretty calm and collected and healed and vital and uh, happy. So maybe we should find out more about what they're doing. Hopefully that happens, right? Not with everyone, but with a lot of people. Thank you, Spirit. Tell us about May for the star seeds. Any more? Just about May for the star seeds. No, 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 me. Okay, this is the one. Keepers of the earth. That is so sweet. <sighs> you are not alone. Ancient ancestors stand beside you. This is so amazing. So not only are we working with our soul family, our star family, our galactic cosmic family, but we're working with, and many of us are, grid keepers, gatekeepers, uh, and really keepers of Gaia. And we're the ones that connect to the earth, and we have to be in nature, and connect to fairies, and all sorts of cool stuff. So the ancestors of the earth and Gaia herself is really connecting to us now and uh, we have a role to play and we're doing it. We're doing the damn thing. So keep that in mind. Pray for Gaia, you know, give some of your energy to Gaia and she will heal as well. She will take negative energy as well. She's really good at transmuting that. But we can transmute the pain uh, that she's been through and the healing that she's doing too. We need to be working hand in hand. So I love you guys. I'm excited for May. I hope you are too. And um, Lapis Lazuli, Tektite. You can go online and find more crystals that are better for um, galactic and a cosmic connection if you want to connect with your star family okay divine crystals work good as well amethyst selenite moldavite 
Those are really good, uh, all really good for clarity, connection, intuition, protection, as well as the black tourmaline for protection. Okay, so I hope you have a great day. This was just a random thing for star seeds and uh, I guess an energy update for the collective if you're down for that. Uh, if you're on this ascension process with me. So I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.